Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Kansas Board of Regents General Education Package Update for High School Counseling. Uh, this webinar is uh, geared especially for our high school professionals working with um, seniors and juniors. And um, what we wanted to do today was to give you an update on the new general education package that was approved last summer in June. Uh, it is not um, rolling out quite yet, and I'll explain um, where we are in the process. Our higher education institutions are working on that, but I do think it's um, definitely good information to know, and it's going to start some good conversations for you in the fall with regard to advising and um, talking to your students about concurrent enrollment, and it'll shape it'll shape uh, some of the choices that our, our students, our high school students especially, will make. So I'm excited that you're here. We'll, we, I, I know we'll have some more uh, folks join us um, in the next few, few minutes. So, um, and, and I know there are several folks that registered that maybe for some reason weren't able to join us. So our webinar is being recorded today um, and we'll be posting that along with the presentation slides on our, um, our cable website. So as soon as I get that posted, I'll send out an email to everyone that registered uh, with a link to both of those resources for you. Um, in addition, if you are listening to this or you watch the recording and you would like me to come out and present this information to a group of counselors that you work with or, or um, present that again, um, either in person or um, you know virtually, I, I would be happy to do that either this spring or in the fall. Just um, contact me, let me know how I can be a resource for you. So with that being said, I'll, I'll kick it off. And, and my name is Tara Labar. I'm Associate Director for Academic Affairs with the Kansas Board of Regents. Um, my background is in high school counseling. And so I, um, I'm always happy to be a resource for our high school professionals uh, in the state of Kansas with regard to higher education topics. So today we're talking about general education. And before I jump into what that looks like, I wanna give you a little bit of history and background on where we're coming from. And so this project started um, in earnest in 2019, in, in that year, um, a couple of different things were happening at the same time. We were fielding some complaints about transfer across the state, students and then the transfer process, losing credits and, and things not transferring between institutions and things like that. Um, in addition, the Future of Higher Education Council was meeting and discussing um, transfer um, and then it, and then um, th out of that future of education council, the board of regents uh, created a directive for the staff to start addressing um, transfer. And they wanted to look at the issue of transfer in Kansas in our system institutions. So in 2020 through 2021, uh, a board goal was established to create a common general education package. and. And out of that, a 19-member general education working group was created, and they began working on developing a common general education package. That was a two-year process, um, and that 19-member working group worked on that, and it also, there was another nine-member implementation working group that helped kind of test run some of the ideas and some of the policy, helped write some of the policy. And out of all of that work of those two groups in two years, the board approved the policy that we're gonna talk about today on June 15th, 2022, so last June. Um, and so everything that we're gonna talk about today was just approved this past June. Um, a little bit of history, these are our surrounding states with regard to general education. So if you look at um, the states in green, um, a general education in some form or another is required for both um, associate's degrees and baccalaureate degrees, meaning there is some type of transfer package um, with the public institutions in these states. Um, in the blue states, there's a general education package that's required for associate's degrees to transfer. Um, and 
Kansas right now is the only state in our region that doesn't have any general education package at all. Um, and, and as we were looking at this, combined with our history and combined with you know, some of the um, challenges that our students were reporting with regard to transfer, this was one of the big reasons why we really wanted to make that change. Starting in the fall of 2024, when um, our policy goes into implement, is required to be implemented, this is what the um, central United States is gonna look like. And so we're gonna be in line with the rest of the, the area. Now, again, I don't want you to think that everyone's package looks exactly the same. It doesn't. Everyone's general education package looks a little bit different, but um, we will also have a general education package that um, is included for both associate and baccalaureate degrees. So um, that's, that's exciting for us. And that, again, like I said, the policy take a, takes effect in the fall of 2024 and essentially for our um, rising seniors this year. So the class of 2024, as they enter um, their higher education institutions, that's when this policy takes effect. So, oh, and before I do that, um, you, uh, as I go into this, you are welcome to post questions. I will try to answer them as I go, and I certainly will leave time at the end to answer questions. Um, and so I'll be kind of watching that as we go along um, and I'll try to get through the in information and I'll try to answer as many questions as we have. We, we have lots of people in this session as well. So hopefully I can get to everyone's question as we go along. So um, so very broad overview. Our, our Kansas general education package is 34 to 35 credit hours total um, spread across seven different course Sub, uh, categories or buckets. We'll use we'll use buckets as an analogy. And I said um, this is required of all of our public institutions, community colleges, and universities to implement in the fall of 24. Um, and you can kind of see how those um, uh, categories or buckets are distributed here. So six credit hours, two courses in the English discipline, um, three credit hours in communications, three credit hours in math four to five credit hours in national, natural or physical science discipline areas. And that's where that 34 or 35 credit hours comes into play because some institutions have a four um, credit hour lab science and some institutions have a five credit hour lab science. So really this is the only bucket that has any type of wiggle room with the credit hours. So that's why it's either 34 or 35 credit hours. Social and behavioral sciences, they have six credit hours. Um, arts and Humanities also has six credit hours, and then there's a bucket that has six credit hours um, that is going to be an institutionally designated area, and each institution will get to choose what goes in that bucket. Um, so seven buckets, seven categories, and, and students can, um, once they complete that, uh, the courses, then they will complete the, the Kansas General Education Package. Um, with the seven GE bucket framework, general education framework, um, for example, the social and behavioral sciences discipline area, there's six credit hours, at least two courses from two different subject areas. Um, and so you can see, you know, the different types of categories that can come from this subject area here. And then similar type of um, concept in the arts and humanities discipline area. Two courses from two subject areas. Now, for the arts and humanities area, this is something that's going to be a little bit different between institutions. Some institutions um, are, are comfortable with performance courses being in their general education uh, coursework meaning you can take a piano performance course or an acting course or a drawing course, things like that. Some institutions are not okay with performance courses being as a part of the general education um, coursework. And that will still be up to institutions. We've, we've allowed for that institutional um, choice. And so um, the, the institutions will be able to choose whether or not those courses are, are able to be in this bucket um, for students attending those institutions. 
And then with the institutionally designated area, this area, as it says, provides flexibility for each institution to define their own requirements um, as, as their institution sees fit. So you can see that while the 34 to 35 hours is going to be similar across all of our public institutions, each institution has a little bit of flexibility for um, their own identity and their choice as well. OK, um, and that's why as we talk about this, it's going to be important for you to kind of get to, to know and become familiar with the with your local institutions, GE, or general education um, package. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share this information with you now, because as fall rolls around, you can start these conversations and you can kind of see as these general education packages are being developed um, with your local institutions and start becoming familiar with them. So how will this work? Now, this is where the policy comes into play. Um, so for students that complete the system-wide general education package, let's say a student completes system-wide general education, they complete all seven of the general education buckets at one of our institutions. Um, and then the student transfers. Um, institution B, not require additional general education courses. The intention of the policy is that when that student transfers, there will be a check mark on their transcript that says they complete their system wide general education package. And there's something on their transcript that says system wide general education package is complete. And you can see the student, Ricky Bobby. Um, he has taken all his coursework at the um, at you know his institution, and now he's got that complete on his transcript. Um, and so when he transfers to institution B, they see that on his transcript, and it doesn't matter if their general education package is a little bit different. They 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 can't pick that apart. Basically, this Ricky Bobby comes in to this institution and they check general education package is complete. He can jump into his major requirements. Now, just like every policy that's ever been written, there are a few exceptions and I'll go over those because we did write a few exceptions into the policy. Um, and, and so, we tried to keep those exceptions as limited as possible because the intention is that the general education package does not get picked apart. Once it's complete, it doesn't get picked apart. So hopefully these kind of make the most sense. And then we'll talk in a minute about what happens if they don't complete the gen ed package and how that looks. So right now we're talking about student completes general education package. Okay, one of the exceptions is um, if there is a major required prerequisite, okay? So for example, um, the student completes their general, ed general education package requirements, um, but they transfer in to Wichita State and they want to be a, a engineering major, but they didn't take physics, all right? Physics is going to be a requirement for every engineering major. So Wichita State can't pick the general education package apart and make Ricky Bobby take different courses, but Ricky's gonna have to take physics to be a part of the engineering program because that's a major, that's a, a major requirement. So again, now could physics have been part of his general education coursework? Absolutely. Um, so I think there's an element of common sense to some of these things and, and, and advising, of course, but they would only have that student take that one course and it won't be in essence um, a response to general education. It will always be as a part of the major. Okay, so that's one of the exceptions. Second exception I'm gonna talk about um, is there are some of our institutions have a requirement with regard to grading, meaning so some institutions say, well, you have to get a C or higher in order in comp one to be able to go to comp two. Um, otherwise, you can't take it. 
Okay, so uh, for example, if a student takes, um, if a student completes the general education package and they don't get that grade requirement that is um, required at the receiving institution, but the general education check box is checked and it's completed, if it's completed, they cannot make the student take that class over if they didn't get their grade requirement. Once it's completed, it's completed. The only exception to that would be if the student is pursuing a program with a grade standard that's required because of programmatic accreditation or some type of outside accrediting body, in which case there would be a one course type of thing similar to the major requirement that we talked about again with the um, engineering, but it's not gonna be an institution requirement, it's gonna be a crediting requirement. Um, so if the, um, if, if the student, you know, once that, once that box is checked and general education um, package is complete, even if the rules that that receiving institution maybe quite aren't the same, they can't pick it apart and make a student redo a general education that's written into the policy. Um, I'm looking at the question that we have. Um, it says if gen ed package is completed at John, uh, Johnson County or Fort Scott and they want to transfer to KU, currently KU requires two courses of Spanish. Will this mean they complete this gen ed package and not have to do Spanish at KU? Currently, students applying to KU this fall, this means they won't have to take Spanish. So it doesn't take effect until next fall. So right now, if they're applying this fall, KU's in the process of reworking there. Right now, we're within the same rules we always have. So it won't take effect until next fall. KU has not reworked their general education package yet. So if the student's applying right now, chances are they're still going to be within the same general education package that KU has, has had previously, and the rules will still be the same for this coming fall. It's for next fall that they will change. So it's possible that it would look different for fall of 24, but fall of 23 would be the same if that helps. So the last exception I'm going to show you is these performance courses. And that's when I was talking to you about how some institutions are gonna be okay with performance classes and some institutions are not gonna be okay with performance classes. Our policy says that when, that when that general education package is complete, it's complete and um, students, um, it's complete and students complete that general education package when the receiving institution gets them. It doesn't matter if they accept performance classes or not. When the, the box is checked complete, the, um, the, they can't pick it apart and they can't, they can't make students, you know, they can't accept a performance class or not accept a performance class, whatever. Once it's complete, they have to accept it as the sending institution um, awarded it, okay? So that's when the performance course policy doesn't um, take effect because when it's complete, it is complete, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I just got another question. This will affect your 2024 seniors. All right, so those are the exceptions and how they work for students that have completed the general education package. All right, now, now, now it gets hairy, all right? Because when it comes to high school, we're probably gonna have more students that don't complete than do, okay? Um, and so this is where I think it, it helps us to know, you know, how it works when we don't complete and, and, um, and I think, kind of looking at the ins and outs of that. So what happens if a student takes some general education courses, but not the whole package, and they're not gonna get that checkbox on their transcript? And that's fine too, it's still gonna be helpful, but how, how do these rules work with regard to that, okay? So student completes some of the general education courses, but not all of them, and they transfer in, um, 
for example, um, I want to talk to you about our system-wide transfer courses. All of our system-wide transfer courses, um, the ones that can anyway, have been sorted into the different six buckets, right? Because seven is the institutional bucket. So really we're looking at the six different buckets. So include English Comp 1, English Comp 2, there's your English bucket. Um, public speaking, interpersonal communication, there's your communication bucket. Math courses, math. Science courses, science with a lab, that's gonna be your science bucket. You can look and see, now we've got our, um, our, our system-wide transfer courses. Remember, a majority, Almost all of your um, concurrent enrollment courses are going to be these system-wide transfer courses. So you can see where they line up and which buckets they line up, right? So um, this is how our concurrent enrollment classes fit into the system-wide transfer buckets, okay? Now, um, we've got another student here. I tell you my our, our vice president he's got a sense of humor and he likes movies so this is ron burgundy the third and he also is a transfer student but he didn't finish the general education package right so he's here and he's got a few courses he's got history since 1877 he's got comp one he's got music appreciation he's got english comp two okay so let's see how he does on his general education package all right he's got comp one and comp two so we got that bucket. We've got American Lit. No, yeah, me, sorry, Music Appreciation and History, U.S. History. Okay. Oh, Max. So he's got um, he's got the the English bucket complete, and he's got the Arts and Humanities bucket complete. He's got two buckets, and now when he transfers, he's going to he'll go to his institution and he'll finish. Um, He'll finish the remaining parts of his general education. So what we're asking the institutions is to take those system-wide transfer courses. We know where those go. They go in the buckets already, done and done, right? And then the students can look and see what else they need to do. Now for your high school students, what you might wanna have them do is if they know they're going to KU or they know they're going to K-State, they know they're going to Pittsburgh or Wichita or you know, one of our, universities, they can start looking directly at their general education packages and work the, off of those. If they're not sure, work with your concurrent enrollment provider and work off their um, general education package. And we'll eventually we'll have pathways for students to finish the general education pathway packages through your local institutions as well. So you'll kind of start figuring out when to advise your students to kind of look at where they're headed and when to advise your students to look at um, your local um, uh, concurrent enrollment provider, your local community college, your local, um, your local institutions to kind of how to work off which list. Because again, they're, they're mostly the same, but they'll be a little bit different. Now, if you don't finish the general education package, how do those exceptions play out? And that's the next slide, okay? So let's talk about those two exceptions. Um, one, the grading exception, okay? Remember, if you, complete your, if you complete your general education package, the receiving institution can't make you retake a class if you didn't get the required grade to move on, right? Well, if you don't complete your package, they can. So for example, that comp one and comp two example, if you didn't get the C required to go on to comp two, and let's say a high school student didn't get the C, but then they went ahead and took comp two, um, the receiving institution can make them retake that comp one. If you don't complete the gen ed package, that's when the receiving institution can pick that apart and make those students, hold those students to that grading requirement, their institutional grading requirement, okay? The other one, the performance core standards, I don't think this one's going to come to play as much because we don't have as many performance course concurrent enrollment classes at the high school level. I mean, I'll, I'm going to tell you about it anyway. I'm just saying I think the first exception is more applicable probably at the high school level than the second, but it's good to know. Um, same thing with the performance courses. 
um, is that if they do a performance course for college credit um, and they transfer that in with an incomplete general education package, the receiving institution can say, we don't accept performance courses and not accept that credit, make the student take a different one. Um, so again, when the general education package is not complete, that's when the receiving institution can start picking things apart and can hold them to the institutional standard. The other thing is, um, I think you also, um, when it comes to different institution requirements is institutions can put additional courses in these buckets as well, not just the system-wide transfer courses. System-wide transfer courses are automatically in there. Perfect, that's great. But they can also put their additional courses. So for example, our universities are probably going to have more course choices that go into these buckets than our community colleges may have, for example. And so um, if students choose to take courses that um, are institution courses, take something different that fit into that course, and then they transfer with an incomplete general education package, it's up to the receiving institution to accept that course in that general education package if they offer it, et cetera. And my hope is, the intention is that they would still offer that credit for that general education credit, but it is at the receiving institution's discretion. So they have to accept the system-wide general education course. They have to accept the system-wide transfer courses. And, and we hope they would accept the other ones from the sending institution, but it is up to the receiving institution to take any other credits and apply them to this general education coursework. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll pause for a second just to see if there are questions about kind of how this is um, implemented. Um, so the question about K-State, um, K-State eight requirements, six credits from this list, and yeah, it says, you know, some major might say six credits from math from this list. Music ed may say six credits from this list. And yeah, so K-State's going to rework all of that. Yes, <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know. I don't know if they'll end up, it's likely they'll end up changing their name. The K-State 8, the KU Core, all of that stuff will be different. I don't know if they'll change the name or not, um, but it will be different. So, so what you know about those programs will look very different starting next fall. Yes, a few tears from them, but it will be simpler. Yes, <laughs> I hope so anyway. That's the intention. And, and simpler for students transferring ideally as well. Um, that's, that's really, that's really the, the intention. So, okay, now let's talk, I'll, I'll keep taking questions, but now let's talk about credit by exam. Okay, credit by exam, um, because credit by exam still counts too. And as we talk about credit by exam, AP, CLEP, IB credit, and we just added um, Cambridge International credit to our policy as well. We have standardized credit cut scores across the system for AP, CLEP, IB, and Cambridge International. Um, and so with the exception of the two subjects, it's art history and physics, um, every other AP score should be a three or above for credit, some type of credit on AP classes. Art history and physics are the only two tests that are four or above for credit um, across our system. CLEP is 50 or above. Um, IB, you can see four or above, and then Cambridge International's ear, um, you know, on the A level or the AS level. Um, and so you can see as those credits come in, we tried to write into this general education policy that um, as, as these courses count towards our general education package, um, that as they go to the receiving institution, the receiving institution needs to take, needs to accept these credit by exam credits in the general education area as if they are taken in class 
from the sending institution, meaning they cannot ask the student to send their scores again um, from AP. I think that's what happens most frequently. Um, and so one of the things, as I make a point here, one of the things that could look different for us in the next coming years is um, we may have our high school students sending their AP scores to the community college issuing um, concurrent enrollment to complete their gen ed package with the intention of transferring. And they may never even set foot on the community college campus, or maybe they take a couple online classes or something like that to complete the gen ed package with the intention of transferring. Um, whereas in the past, we really haven't been in the practice of sending those AP scores to the um, community college at all. Um, we had always just sent it on to wherever the student was going to matriculate. So I don't know how that will shake out, but that very well could change our practice here in the coming years, just because depending on how we look at um, what benefits the students as this general education package um, pathway develops. So, um, okay, we've got some questions. I'm going to pop, I'm going to pop. I'm going to come back to those in just a second here. Um, so you can see here this credit by exam transfer. We've got another tra uh, transcript here. We've got Chaz Michael Michaels. Um, and he has, uh, you can see the first top two courses are credit by exam, advanced placement. He got English Comp 1 and American Government. And what we've said is the receiving institution needs to take these courses um, as if they were completed at the sending institution. Um, and so that means he doesn't have to resend those scores, et cetera. They just need to be accepted for the credit that they that has been given on the transcript. So um, let's see. Uh, let's go next. OK, so I wanted to do a high school case study. Um, and I just selected a student um, because I, I this this individual high school student has 31 credits total between credit by exam and concurrent credit. And I just thought this is kind of, um, a, I think, a good example of what might be happening in Kansas right now. And a, um, and I wanted to use this student and kind of put this student on the Jenna gen ed um, package and see where we line up. So this student um, is going to graduate and uh, the student has three credits of comp one from AP English language exam, three credits of statistics, uh, three credits of AP environmental science. So those are all from AP exams, six credits of concurrent credit in US history, five credits in pre-calc, three credits in comp two, um, three credits in U.S. government and five credits in Calc 1, okay? And so again, 31 credits total between credit by exam and concurrent credit. You would say, man, 31 credits. Our gen ed package is 34 to 35. This student should be pretty far along in that package. That's great. So pull up our system-wide transfer courses, GE bucket resource here and see how the student did. So we got comp one and comp two, nice. English buckets done, perfect. Next, math, done. Actually done and done and done. The student's got lots of math. Um, natural and physical science, only three credits from environmental science. So not the four to five credit hours, gotta have a lab. So that class didn't count for college credit. So didn't get that one done. Um, with the social behavioral science bucket, got American government, but need two courses from two subject areas, so only got that one. All right, and then arts and humanity, got both U.S. histories, but we need two courses from two subject areas. Don't have another one in that subject area. So when we add it up, this, our case study, with all those 31 credits, this student has one bucket done, two buckets done and two half buckets done, which isn't really a lot. I mean, it's a lot and it's a lot of credit. And, and this student is gonna get credit going to college, that's not an issue. But I think it's a really great illustration of 
what's been happening in Kansas up until now, right? Because right now our students are, it's just grab everything you can get, right? It's just get whatever you can, pay for whatever you can, grab whatever you can um, and hope it works. And, and working as a high school counselor, I mean, it makes sense to me that a student doesn't need six credits of history and three credits of government. Every student doesn't need that. But I didn't ever have the language or the map or the information to say definitively, this is probably not very useful or this is overkill, right? Now we have a better map, right? Um, and again, this is obviously, this is general education package for students staying in Kansas. Um, in full transparency, this case study is my son. So you can't even laugh and say, if we're, this, poor, this poor student, if only his mom was a high school counselor. I don't know, there's maybe a couple of things we would have done differently, but probably not. I can tell you all the different choices that we made along the way, um, but, but, as we look at it, I don't think it's very different than what a lot of our students do in Kansas. And I think it's a great example of what, I, th I think of how our advising will change and how it changes for our students. And I think it'll give them more information to make more informed decisions. So, um, so it just I, I think being able to kind of think about how your advising will change and how your conversations will change with your students. So with that being said, let's talk about some next steps, because this is usually when all my counselors start going, oh, my gosh, wait, we're not going to be good at this. And I don't know what to do. And, and all this. Don't panic. That's what I want to say. Don't panic. OK, first of all. Next fall. Start talking to your local institutions and your concurrent credit providers. Start asking them what their packages are going to look like, um, what learning, what they're doing. Because remember, most of them are still in the development phase. It's okay. Um, they're still figuring it out. It's not done yet. Um, some of our institutions are coming out. Some of our institutions are going to be ready um, in 23. Um, some of them are not, and that's really, really okay. Um, here we go. That's really okay. Um, I've listed the ones that we think might be ready for 24. And let me see. Um, I've listed the ones that I think might be ready for 24 here. And I'm going to. I'm going to stop sharing and reshare real quick. There we go. My computer is being weird. There we go. Oh, try again here. Sorry, my technology difficulties here. Try again. There we go. Now I think I've got it. Thanks for bearing with me. All right. Um, here we go. So these are the institutions that possibly have said they, they are going to try to be ready this fall with their new gen ed package. Um, Emporia State, possibly Fort Hayes, Pittsburgh State, maybe Washburn, um, and, and likely many of our community colleges. So, um, you know, this is a great question to ask your uh, local institution when they come around. If they're not ready, it's okay. They do not have to be ready until, um, they don't have to be ready until 24. That's really okay. They're not supposed to be ready. Um, so, we've got time. Everybody's got time and we want to give them time to get ready. Second of all, um, start talking to your rising juniors and rising seniors. This is the time where we get to kind of, we've got a little bit of grace to get good at how we talk to our students about this. Start thinking too, how is this going to work with your per private universities providing concurrent credits, right? 
So are we going to transfer those credits over to one of your, the public institutions, like start thinking about how that's going to work and, and how that, and then overall, just how is your advising going to change? It's just going to change. Um, it's, I think overall, this is, I don't know that it changes a lot for our high school students, but I think it's, it is going to be a positive thing. So how do we switch our advising and working with our high school students? Um, so remember, full implementation is a year from next fall. Fall 24 um, is when all of this comes to um, fruition. Then after fall of 24, I'll be back. And that's when we're going to really talk about general education 2.0, the high school edition, right? And so once our higher education institutions have their general ed packages like established and set and figured out, that's when I'm going to really need your help. And we'll start figuring out now what do we do? Start thinking about what concurrent courses or what dual credit options do we need to put in place for our students to have access to complete these gen ed packages? Um, how do we create those pathways in our schools? to allow students to finish that gen ed package if they want to. And again, several students won't, and that's still okay, but how do we create that pathway for them so they can if they want to? Um, and then also, how do we discuss best practices for students utilizing that mix of concurrent credit, credit by exam, dual credit, et cetera, to maximize their options with that gen ed um, credit? And, and what else? Like, I need you guys on the front line thinking, oh my gosh, Tara, we forgot about this. How do we do that? Or this is an obstacle, this isn't working, that type of thing. So that's all coming after fall 24. And so that's part of why I'm kind of planting these seeds with you and letting you know so that we can start this work now and it doesn't have to be perfect yet. Um, a couple, couple uh, resources for you. We have all of this information, this is probably way too much information, but on our general education um, uh, website, um, our KBOR website has all this information about general education stuff. I'm going to put our um, presentation and our recording on the counselor resource page. So I'll send that link to you. But if you want to look up general education, it's all here. And that's a great resource for you. Um, and then also our system-wide transfer courses. You guys have seen this before, but this is also a great resource for you. If you don't know, this majority, almost all of our concurrent classes are listed on this, on this page for you as well. With that being said, I'm going to kind of go through the, the list of questions and answer those as we go, and I'll take more. Um, but uh, there's my contact information. Again, like I said, if you've got a group of, of counselors or a group of high school professionals that you're like, oh my gosh, I wish we could have Tara back and we could hear, we could ask more questions about this and just um, wrap our heads around this in a different way, um, contact me. I'd be happy to zoom in or I'd, I'd be happy to come visit if I can um, and present and, and spend an hour with your team. Um, and and I've been doing that throughout this uh, semester as well. I've been trying to get this information out as much as I can. I can do that in the fall too. So um, we certainly can do that. So I'm gonna look through the questions here. Uh, let's see, if a student completes an associates with general education at a community college and doesn't transfer in 23, but starts in 24, will junior colleges award this gen ed package? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would hope so, but I, you know, if they, they, they complete their associate, my hope would be most of those would transfer in there. And I do think in general, most of our um, institutions are doing the best they can um, and trying to count as many credits as they possibly can. Um, so my hope would be that, that they wouldn't pick it apart and, and make that student unless they're changing dramatically. But um, I'm not totally sure how that things will change retroactively. Um, so I'm not positive about how that will change. Oh, the other thing I will say about the exceptions. Right now, this summer, our institutions are also looking through their list of majors and um, different things and requesting exceptions. So there may be additional exceptions that come through this process, and we'll learn those as we go, but that will come through this summer. And so I'll probably have more information about that um, we'll see how those develop um, over time uh, this summer. But overall, I think uh, our intention is that the gen ed package will um, make transfer across Kansas smoother 
we're not looking to create more exceptions, but we know there's things that we can't think about. Like I said, with every policy, there are exceptions. We're trying to be um, cognizant of that and work with our institutions in that and trying to still keep this as student friendly as possible. Um, let's see, we have major issues, especially with the science classes from system wide transfer list transferring and being counted as a prerequisite requirement for a major. Um, for example, anatomy and physiology for nursing schools. What we offer is supposed to be counted, but it seems schools change their credit requirements and say it's not good enough. Does the policy affect things like that? So some of that goes back to that accreditation piece. And that we're going to kind of see that's probably going to go down to one of those exceptions we might see accreditation wise come through the summer. So we may know more of that in the fall when it comes to especially nursing programs, engineering programs, we do expect to see some exceptions come through for those programs. And like I said, the intention is, is not to have as many, but we expect to see some of those things come through the exception process. So um, will there be a point when all community and region schools use the same name for GE courses? Um, we hope uh, general education courses, um, that's interesting. Are you talking gen general edu course, ed education courses or packages? I think we're trying to keep some of the institution identity piece within this process, but then also keep it connected and seamless as we can. Um, the system-wide transfer coursework is about as connected across the system as we can, as it will ever be. So those 114 courses, as long as they're offered at the public institution, um, is about as, I don't know, um, for as far as connecting all the general education courses, that's about as, as, as connected as we could get. Um, so I don't know, like I said, I'm not totally sure what you're looking for there, but I think with our system-wide transfer courses, that's maybe our, our effort to try to name general education courses the same. So um, let's see, if a student earns a four on the AP exam, are they still required to do additional labs that may be above and beyond the lab in AP physics high school or general education physics credit? Um, that one, that question I'm not sure about the answer to. And again, sometimes the AP physics is a different, like there's an algebra physics and then there's a different physics. And so I don't know that one. We'd have to check with the engineering credit to see if it's a prerequisite for the major, what it counts for. That's another one that's kind of um, AP. I know AP physics doesn't always match up with what the physics in college they want. And I don't know enough about math and physics to know why that doesn't always match up. Um, so will you be providing a chart with the courses that fit into each bucket at some point? Yeah, that 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 list that I displayed in the PowerPoint, you guys can have that and I'll um, make the PowerPoint available with the recording. So yes, you can see where all those courses fit in. And that, and that actually lines up those, um, system-wide transfer courses with the buckets. Mm -hmm. um. All right, when you say full imp implementation in fall 24, and it affects the class of fall 24, how do we advise these students for next year? Or is it really class of 25 who it will fully affect? It's it's actually the class of 24. Um, it's actually the class of 24. It's just the, they, it's just hard to anticipate because, um, and that's where, as we discuss that, um, they're just, I mean, as they matriculate, they're going to bring their credits in um, and they're going to come into a new general education design. Um, and so there, 
the institutions are working on those packages um, and they are hoping to have those ready for enrollment for your students as they enroll. Um, they just, as they enroll. So your class of 24, when they go to enroll in the spring of 24, will have the design of the new gen eds. Obviously we'll know more for the class of 25, but yeah, it is, it is going to be implemented for the fall of 24 for enrollment of 24. Yep. Um, we do concurrent in our high school with Sinai Tech, but I have kids taking online classes through other community colleges. Let's say um, someone gets 34 of the right credits, but the credits are for three institutions. They send the credit to one community college for the stamp of completion. So yes, they'd have to get those, and that's where they'd have to meet the requirements of that one public institution. So I'll try to type that in. But yes, it all has to meet the requirements of one institution. And our technical colleges are not included in this general education umbrella because most of our technical colleges do not offer the range of um, general education coursework to be able to offer all of the courses. So um, it would have to be a community college or a university. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they'd have to kind of have a roadmap from either a community college or a university. And that's why you kind of have to help tell your students which where to pick their roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, another question. Okay, I appreciate the information, but it feels like we're getting too late. This year's juniors already took six credit hours in US history. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and again, remember, like we're not gonna do this perfectly. Um, it's not done yet. It's not baked yet. It's it's gonna it's a work in progress, and we've got to start somewhere. Um, and so, it's this is um, this is where we're starting. Um, and frankly, we don't have enough information. We don't have enough information, like like we just said a minute ago, to really. We didn't have enough information to prep the class of twenty four, even last fall. Um, so we're going to just start working. It's going to take us time to rework our advising. Give yourself some grace. Um, start learning. We just got to start somewhere. Um, again, our students aren't going to be at a disadvantage. Their courses are going to be put to, um, they're going to be utilized. It's going to be okay. Um, they're, we're not going to have our seniors, our class of 24, graduate with their complete gen ed packages and transfer in. That's not what the point of this webinar is. The point of the webinar is to give you guys some information to start with and to know where we're headed um, so that we can get um, some conversations started and we can start looking at how do, how is our advising going to change? Our, our students aren't gonna be put at a disadvantage if they don't get their gen ed packages completed before they graduate from high school. It's gonna be okay. Um, but our conversations are gonna change. So it's okay. Um, this is a good place to start and we're gonna be a lot better at it and we're gonna be in a lot better place come fall of 24 when the packages are complete. We've had some time to work with it and then we can really hit the ground running on how do we change some things around so we can maximize this for our students, for our high school students. So that's really where I want you guys to be thinking and to be shooting for once these um, packages get, does, get set and um, settled for the fall of 24. So um let's see we've got another question we have students that take a majority of their credits through one institution for dual credit but we go through a couple other for different classes would they have to transfer the credits from other institutions to the one they have to most to complete their package? And the answer is yes. Yeah, that's how things are gonna change, yeah. And there's possibility they're gonna send all their AP classes, their scores to an institution maybe they, didn't, they don't matriculate to. 
that's a possibility. That's going to, that's how things are going to start looking different. And I don't know what that's going to look like, but that's kind of those are, yes, you're thinking about the right things. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer more questions. And like I said, we'll be sending out the recording for you. I appreciate everyone being here and taking time and said, you've got my information. If you want to reach out and talk to me about other things, give me a call. Or if you'd like me to come out and present to a group of counselors, let me know. Um, but I'm excited for what this will do for students transferring in Kansas. And I think also for our high school students, I think it's going to be a lot more direct path for them too. So I think this is um, a positive change. I hope you do too. I know it's going to be a change in how we do things at high school, but I also think it's going to be a positive change for our students um, once we make the switch. So thanks for being here and thanks for learning. Have a great rest of your week.